Would you make this declaration for, with us together? Let's declare that this is my Bible. Oh, come, come, come. Come on, let's declare this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I understand faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You may be seated in his presence. We're grateful to God for uh, this day that we celebrate. We're honored that God is uh, in this place. God doesn't stop by everywhere, but the presence of the Lord is here. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst but he's in the midst of those who desire him, want him, that want him to come in. And I believe God is here and uh, he's uh, wanting to say something and do something through us and to us and transform us. How many people are ready to be transformed? Hey Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to preach to myself happy today. At 8 o'clock, I just, I almost, I was going to shout at 8 o'clock and run around the church. This word was so good to me. You know, the word is good because you realize that you have not arrived yet. When you realize you've still got work to be done, like you came here today recognizing and you're like, you know what? Fix me, Lord. How many people there? Fix me, Lord. Like, I don't have it yet. Like, I, I'm a good person. I do some good things, but I don't have it all together. And that's what I realize when I hear the word. I, I love that. Yeah. I, I, when I start to realize I don't have it together all together like i need some stuff like speak to me god i'm gonna be a willing vessel shape me mold me in this moment how many people there shake me mold me make me help me and so i i'm gonna need the lord i i'm setting you up because i need god to help you with this because i was preaching at eight o'clock and realized i wasn't there yet i said oh god i went back in the room I said, oh god help me so i'm gonna preach to both of us all of us to all together y'all with it all right the Bible says in John 3, 16, we're going to do a little review. So the first half of this message is review. I think we, uh, we, we touched on something Thursday. Many of you might have missed it uh, in your attendance, and you might have gotten a chance to rewatch it on the, on the app. And if you have the app, by all means, you can go in there. The notes are there for this particular message. And it's, um, it's the lo Legacy of Love Part 2. And so in Part 1, we talked about love legacy. It's all about, um, uh, it's always manifested by the gifted renters. And so in John 3, 16, you see the words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him shall have everlasting life. All right, some people that didn't say it, you can just uh, you can read it later. I want you to say some things. We have to speak things into the atmosphere, and we speak the word out of our mouths because it makes our reality. It helps shape our reality. I believe for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who else believes that? Just a few people. Amen. And so we believe that. So we understand that love uh, is manifested in the gift it renders, meaning because he loved us, he gave his only begotten son. For those of us that believe, that's exciting. And maybe we could put a cheer or a praise break right there that he gave his only begotten son for us. And it's by his blood I'm delivered. It's by his blood I'm covered. It's because of his stripes I'm healed. I wish I could just get a few people that when you read those words right there something on the inside jumps something on the inside gets you excited because he gave his only begotten son something should just be like ooh, ooh, that was good for me every time i hear that i get excited because i know that i'm covered by the blood i know that he sent his son to die for me when i was yet not even a seedling not even a thought he thought about me enough to say i knew he wouldn't have made it had I not sent him, oh, come on, I wish, okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I, suppose I, that, I told you it just overwhelms me with excitement that, that he would gave, give, and so he teaches us that love gives in spite of, that was when we were yet sinners, the Bible tells us, when you were not even right. He came when the world was not even doing right. That's when he sent his son. So the text tells us in Luke 6, as we went over on Thursday, it kind of gave us a, a, a re-up in verses 27 to 36. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. 
I'm stuck here. I, I want to get off of it. I feel like I've been on this like every month. Have I been talking about this every month? I don't. I feel like I'm stuck here because I feel like this is the point that's really going to make or break us in this next season. Our ability to give God glory and to show love and give it to our children because the world screwed up. We're in this like smig and smack. You smack me, I'll smack you back experience and we're stuck there. But the Bible tells us something different. It says, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. And if someone slaps you on one cheek. Somebody, somebody said, you know what? I don't, just, keep, just skip that part of the Bible. Where, where you at? Come on, where you at? Like, okay, thank you. All right, I just, uh, I'm with you. But it's in there. And we, keep, we know about it, but we don't want to hear about it. So he says, turn the other cheek, right? Then he goes on, he says, give to anyone who asks, and when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you, and if you love only those who love you, watch this, why should you get credit for that? I'll read that apart again. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. Let me put it another way. Even people that don't go to church can do that. Even people who don't love God know how to love people who love them. It's, the challenge is your ability to love people that are not easy. The EGR, extra grace required people. The ability for you to love even when someone has done you wrong, that's the legacy that Christ, he, that's what he, okay. Oh. It's a tough, tough crowd. If you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. If you lend money only to those who can repay you, why should you get credit for that? Just check and see if y'all listen there. Some of y'all like this. Keep, keep going because I don't want to listen to any of that. Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. Here's the part, the good part. You ready for the good part? Because the other part was real tough. Love your enemies. He repeats it again. <laughs> Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then, are y'all reading in your text? Does it, is it up there for you? Oh, come on. Let's read this out loud together. Then, oh, come on. Stereo. Put this in stereo. Put this in stereo. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Stay right there. Come on. Amen. Thank you. It sounded good, right? It says, then, whoa, whoa, back up. We're in the good part because we're talking about the reward. So attached to my understanding this legacy of love and rendering gifts, see, because you could say you love me, but if, you, if there's no fruit, there's no, there's no substance, don't tell me you love me and you don't show no action. I'm t women, I thought y'all would just yell and scream. What am I saying? If you, how could you say you love me and there's nothing tangible to show that you love me? There has to be something physical, and it can't just be sex. <laughs> Felt like I dropped the mic. I mean, I'm helping us, though. I promise you, I'm helping us. I'm, I am. I'm helping us. <laughs> I love Stanley. <laughs> I'm helping you. Listen, it, it has to be tangible. There has to be something that's given. And that's what, what he says here. He says, then there's a reward connected to your ability to love your enemies and to do good to them and not respect, uh, uh, expecting repayment. He says, because I'll reward you. Go on, watch this. And then, watch this. Here we go. And now we can go. Go ahead. And you will truly be acting as children of the most high for watch this watch this because here's the thing you're not a child of God just because you come to church you're not a child of God just because you could pray what makes you a child of God is your ability to press past your flesh and tap into the gifts of the Holy Spirit that when you're weak he's strong in you and your ability to be able to honor God in moments when your flesh don't feel like it 
when you don't want to lift your hands, when you don't want to be nice, when you don't want to treat that person with kindness, that's when you show forth that you're a child of the... That's when he becomes your father. When someone is unthankful and you're still able to be able to say, you know what, that's all good. I didn't do it for them. I did it for God. Oh, I'm teaching better than y'all like. When they're wicked and they don't deserve it. But he said, that's what. But then he goes this in 36. He shows the ultimate legacy process. He said, you must be compassionate just as your. So he basically says there's a legacy factor to this, that your father has, was compassionate to you, that I need you to learn how to be compassionate to other people. Who? What people? The people that you can't stand. Come on, we're in context. The people that you don't like. The people that it's very difficult for you to even smile at because they said some stuff and you know they said what they said. And you're like, uh, mm, no. That person. Okay, am I helping anyone? Okay, come on, these are just review. Let's, let's push, let's push. This is just review. Uh, love legacy always gives without exception, meaning without reason or rule. Meaning when you're leaving a legacy of love, you don't need any reason to show your love. There's no reason for it. There's no exception. I, I'm just doing it just because. Why? Because he showed me that this is what I'm supposed to do. Y'all with me? Love legacy always gives without excuses. Jesus didn't make an excuse when he was giving his life for ours. He willingly did it. And so we have to learn how to give without excuses. Love without excuses. And so I gave you uh, on Thursday, I gave five particular areas that we have to be careful that we love right and we give out of the right context. The first one was agitation. Have you ever loved someone out of agitation? You probably have. They aggravated you to the point and you loved them just because you gave them love or you gave to them or you did something for them come on somebody has ever done this you've done this before you might have given up the goods for someone because they aggravated you so much or you did something because they i I mean i mean not the goods that was too much i'm sorry i didn't realize what i said (laughs) thank you for that You, you you hit me good i'm just saying somebody they didn't bug you to death so you just gave them like here No? Uh, can I get one thing? Somebody told me no. No, someone was so aggravating that you just said, you know what, I'm going to give you this so you can get out my face. I'm moving. I'm moving. Maybe not the goods. So, so she'll, be like, she'll be like, I ain't giving him the goods. If he aggravating, that's it. He ain't getting the goods. If he like it and he love it, he got to put a ring on it. I'm moving, I'm moving. Appeasement. We can't give love out of appeasement just to appease our conscience, just to make us feel good. I'm giving this, I'm loving like this just to make me feel good. Come on, there's sometimes we do stuff and we just want trying to make ourselves feel good, so we'll do it out of appeasement to make ourselves feel right. Because the person did it, oh, I just want to, you know, well, they did for me, so I got to do for them. <sighs> That's not how Jesus is teaching us. That's not what he's trying to get us to. Or maybe you've done it out of appreciation. Uh, This is basically, you know, we've done it because they did something, so I'm just appreciating it. I'm just going to join in and appreciate them, and I'm showing love even though I don't really appreciate them. It's fake. It's false. Come on, somebody. I said we have to be careful not to love like this because God's not teaching us just to love out of appreciation, meaning it's just because they did something. When they do something wrong, you you can't appreciate I don't know if you've ever met that person where when they were doing it right, everything was going okay, you were able to appreciate them, but when things were going wrong, it was all bitter and lemons, limes and rhymes. And you're like this. Well, you, all, you treat me one way when I'm doing good. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. You treat me another way when I'm doing bad. Can you just be even? No, see, a person that don't understand the word, don't understand what God's trying to get them to understand, can't understand how to be good all the time. No, that means I, I'll trip. I'm sorry I did what I did, but get back up, and I should still be affectionate all the way through the process. That's what God's trying to teach us, that even though there are people in our lives that oftentimes are difficult, and then they get the praise one moment, that here, the praise has to stay all the way through if we're going to learn how to love. Come on, I'm in the text. Don't look at me funny. Then it's out of advantage. You know, uh, Luke 6.38, my favorite text. Y'all know I say it all the time during giving, offering times. Give. She'll give it back to you. 
Good measure. All right. All the whole church. And with the same measure, I give it out. Be measured back unto me. That text was, uh, was spoken, and, and uh, we use it for giving, but it's meant for everything. Meaning if I give out mercy, God give it back to me. How? Come on, class. Come on, class. Let's, let's do this here. If, 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 I'm, if I'm giving out gifts and God says, here, I'm giving it out, God says, Get, guess what? God is responsible to give back to me. How? Good measure. So here's the principle. The same thing happens in the love principle because sometimes we give out of advantage. We give because God, I understand the advantages of seed and harvest. The seed and harvest is not financial only. Ooh. Seed and harvest is also love. It's also favor. It's also grace. It's also mercy. Come on. It's in every area. We, we only, we kind of uh, reduce it down to a monetary process, but it's in every area that when I plant seed, there is harvest. There's always an advantage to the process. But the highest level, come on, somebody say the highest level. The highest level of the way God wants me to give love is through affection. It's through the agape process. The affectionate process is just because God said so. What do you mean? Because God said it. Where? In his word. And so he's teaching me and training me through the process that I am to give affectionately. Everybody say that's the review. Now, watch this. So we go into part two of this process. Love legacy always imitates until it emulates. It imitates until it emulates, meaning it does the imitation until I emulate. The definition for emulate means it matches or surpasses the other. It means to basically I imitate until I get it and now I can achieve higher. We're always reaching toward the goal, the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus, and that's through love. And so this legacy of love is I got to imitate some stuff. Jesus puts it this way in John 14, 31, but so that the world may know that I love the Father. Look at this. I do what? I do what? Some people are not participating. I don't know what's wrong with you. Stop it. Come on. When I stop, you're supposed to jump in there. We're participating. I do exactly as the Father command me. Get up. Let's go from here. He, he offers up the command. He says, look, I'm doing, I'm imitating until I can emulate, until I get elevated to where I need. Oh, y'all. Jesus says, I'm going to imitate until I emulate and I go higher. I want you to get this. So he says, get up. Let's go. I want you to get it, so I need you to imitate me. So when Jesus left, they knew what to do. Wait in the upper room till the Holy Spirit comes, and then after that, once you get power, go be my witnesses. Where? Everywhere. What I want you to do? Imitate until you can emulate. That means I want you to do everything I did. So what they do? Peter, go up, preach the gospel. Thousands got saved that day. Went, healed the sick. People got healed. They seen it being done, then they did it. God's trying to get you to a place where you can get past yourself, and sometimes you got to imitate until you can emulate. You know, that's, that's really the real practice. We got to learn how to just, you know, I'm going to just imitate you until I can do it right. I shared with earlier, I, I, I wasn't good with the I love yous. My wife taught me that love you stuff. I, I didn't even cur I, I mean, uh, uh, cry. I couldn't cry. She taught me how to cry. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> She's, I didn't even know how to cry right. I see her cry all the time. And I was like, this, dang, I want to do that. <laughs> Seeing her crying one time, I was like, hold on. Okay, I'm sorry. That's not what she was teaching me. She taught me how to say I love you at night. I didn't know how to say I love you. I ain't never do it like that before. I ain't know what it was for. Why can't I say it every night? I said it last night. Why can't I say it again? She said, you guys, you don't know if you're going to wake up. 
oh, no, I'm going to die. <laughs> and she told me that 18 years ago. She used to say, all the time, you got to kiss me, and you got to say goodnight, and you got to say I love you. I went, It took me a while, and I was sharing with them. I, I didn't catch it one time. It was soft. Okay, because I'm going to say something next. I don't wanna, I'm going to shock a few of y'all. Other 8 o'clock people heard already, but she woke, she woke me up quick, right? I fell asleep, and she woke me up to do the love you thing, and I punched her in the face. She like, well, I was like, oh, 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 oh. Did I do that? Felt like Urkel. <laughs> I did, I, because... Where, where, where I come from, you know, you don't just wake people up. I was in college. They used to wake you up. You had to come out, you know, in college, you come out, you fight. Come on, I'm talking to college students. You, you come out, you just fighting because they play too much. <laughs> Putting stuff on your face and doing stuff. And so when I, in college, they used to spray stuff. Dude, I, I come out fighting. I'm going I'm to hit you. I'm going to get you. So I got married. I didn't know no better. She's like this. Hey, wake up. I love you. Mm. Oh, I ain't mean it. I ain't never do it before. It was quick. It was quick. No, no, nothing. It wasn't abuse. I never did it again. Because I started imitating. So now, no matter how tired I get, it's a, I love you. I promise you it's that fast. She will tell you. Is that fast? If I say I'm, if I kiss and say I love you, I am going to sleep the next second. I don't care if she has something to say next. Say it before the I love you. <laughs> so see, see, because here's the thing: when we're learning how, sometimes even in our worship, even in our actions, God's just trying to get you. First, you gotta, you gotta imitate something until you can emulate, until you get over your own hump. God's telling me to tell you through this whole month to get to a place of legacy where your children can see something visible that they can understand what to do next. And you know, my son, he's, I'm so grateful. He's learning how he's imitating certain things that I, I, I don't know. Hmm. Don't, shh. Mess me up. <laughs> so, it's graduation. He ain't in here, so I can tell him. But don't y'all go back and say nothing to him. So we, he's like, you know, Dad, I got to get dressed up. I'm like, why? It's just eighth grade. Ninth is next. He said, no, 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 I got I to gotta get dressed up. I was like, okay, all right. What are we wearing? Well, you got suits in your closet that you haven't worn yet. No, no, I got to wear something spectacular. I said, spectacular. So he goes in my closet to give me an example of what spectacular looks like. He goes through, and I got a walk-in closet, several suits, jackets, and so forth, and he picks out the only custom-made <laughs> sparkly suit I have that y'all remember, those who were at my, was it the banquet? When we did the banquet, the Renaissance? When we had, she had the old gown. We had all that custom made by Taylor. He designed all of that stuff. He goes and picks that out. Like this. I went, that's like $800 suit. And like this. Well, not like this then, but something like it. Speed the story along. So I said, you know what, okay. My wife comes and says, look, he's a little down. You know, he don't know what you're going to do. I said, okay, I'm going to take him shopping. I got it. So we go shopping. I take him to one of my stores, my favorite store. He go in there. And he look, he go, that's it. I went, dude, that's a tuxedo. <laughs> he goes, no, that's it. I went, try it, try it on, try it on. He goes, right, right, this is it, right? I said, son, I just want you to know that the children that you are in school with don't dress like this. Can I show you some alternatives? He says, no, 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 wouldn't you wear this? I went, <laughs> I, I would wear that, I would wear that. 
you know, it was white with the black lapel Mitch match, white with the black lapels, full tuxedo. He said, what shirt do we put in? Tuxedo shirt, got to go. Not the one that comes with the bow, a specialized one. I said, son, you got your taste is uh, overwhelming me. <laughs> so I said, what kind of bow tie? He said, don't you got some bow ties at home? No, 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 we're not exchanging clothes. Because now he get into the place, we got the same shoe size, ain't want to exchange clothes. Thank God I'm a little heftier, he can't put my clothes on. We good. So he goes, look at this one. Black back, white, white top. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Okay, all right, go ahead, son, whatever you want, man. This is your day. Uh, should I wear a belt? Well, no, this is a tuxedo. You don't wear belts. Well, what do you wear? S suspenders. All right, I'm going to need a pair of black suspenders. I said, oh, you imitating too much now, dog. <laughs> you hurt my pocket. Oh, this imitating, you need to emulate with a job. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen somewhere? <laughs> yeah. I said, okay. Okay. We get it home, and I'm only telling you this story because I brought it home, and I said, look at what the boy got. He got the boy took my money. This is what he got. She said, where do you think he got that from? I said, I don't know, you you like shopping. <laughs> Suspenders too, huh? <laughs> he done got it all, huh? Yeah, see, he's learning how to imitate. I just need to get him to emulate the next step with a job. <laughs> God's trying to get us into a place where we start imitating him, imitating Christ, till we can start emulating and getting over our own flesh. Come on. There has to be a place where you start getting over your own situation. Look at this. The Bible says in uh, John 15, 9 and 10, just as the Father has loved me, I also love you. Abide in me and my love, and if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment, abide in his love. The principle is there has to be an imitation until there's an emulation. Let me give you this last, 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 look at this. Love legacy always declares its submission willingly. There has to, I, it can't be forced upon. See, see I can't force you because when you leave here, you're going to hear what I've, you heard what I've taught. Now you got to go to practice it and I can't be, uh, uh, you know, excuse me, you know that person spoke nasty to you, you're supposed to smile. I can't. You have to, willingly submit yourself to what God has called us to do. The Bible says in John 10, 17, 19, says the father loves me because I sacrifice my life so I may take it back again. Y'all see this? He said, because I sacrifice my life. No one can take my life from me. Jesus basically said, look, I willingly do this love process. God's trying to get you into a place to willingly do the process. You know, as my, my dad, uh, He's, uh, you know, handy. I'm trying to learn it. So, you know, and, and as long as he's around, I just keep him around till I could, until I get it completely. He's teaching the plumbing thing to me, and I'm learning how to do the plumbing, you know. I'm learning how to, I, I could do it. I could sweat a pipe now, and, you know, I could sweat a pipe. I know how to cut the pipe and do the PVC pipe, or, you know, put the, put the, the purple stuff around the cleaner, you know, and, you know, and I, I got it, but I, I was, I watched it, and I willingly come on board. Now, he'll, if I let him, he'll do it, and before I come home, it's done. That's the type of person he is. He'll, you, you tell him, oh, I need this done. How many people, has he come to your house and did something? Where, come on, where you at? Okay, come on, there you go, a few houses here. He'll come over and just do it before, but I, I said, no, I willingly submit myself because I want to learn what you're doing because one day I want to do it. Y'all ain't catching me. God's trying to get you to a place where you willingly submit yourself to the love of God to you all of a sudden you're able to do it as well. Let me give you this last point I close. The final thing is love legacy is God's love for humanity. It is what he's trying to get us to understand. Romans 5, 8 says it like this, but God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were what? While we were what? 
Yet sinners, Christ died for us. Love legacy. God said, this is for humanity. I, while you were sinners, Matthew 5, 44 puts it this way and drives it all the way home. He repeats it again. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be. Is it up there for you? Oh, no. Come on. Watch this. No, give him the scripture. Matthew, watch this. Let's get the scripture. Are y'all reading in your, in your pocket? Watch this. So that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven for he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and the sins reigns on the righteous and the unrighteous so he says look i want you to duplicate i want you to understand this is the legacy i leave that you be able to get this thing down when you understand that this was my makeup for humanity that you catch this i sent my son to die on the cross so that you could love this way he's trying to get us to a point where we can Make a covenant that will declare, God, I'm with you in spite of what people do to me. Man, if I can get some believers to understand this, man, we'll take over the world like Pinky in the Brain. Come on. I wish a few people got a few older people in there. Who wouldn't remember Pinky in the Brain? Every, oh, my God. All of y'all? Y'all, oh. Pinky in the Brain, Pinky wake up every morning. What are we going to do? Take over the world. <laughs> I love it. God is trying to get you every day to wake up in the morning and say, guess what I'm going to do? Take over the world. With what? With the love that I've placed on the inside of you. I want you to get like Pinky in the brain and take over the world and show your love to who? Not just the people that you're good with, but the people that you have a hard time with. How do I do it? With the power of the Holy Spirit operating on the inside of me. How do I get that Holy Spirit, Pastor? I get it by accepting him as Lord and Savior of my life. And he rises up on the inside. But here's the thing. Your Holy Spirit is infant if you never tagged on to him your holy spirit is small so what you do is you have to nurture it like a baby that's why you gotta feed it come on you have to feed it you have to talk to it and walk with it and you have to kind of get it hey you all right oh you come on come on you don't take your baby into the nightclub You don't take your baby in places, you, you take it in places where you want to see it nurtured to grow. So you have to be careful where you take the baby. Somebody, don't you, don't you see my Holy Spirit? He's just trying to get you into place, and I pray you catch this. How many people caught this? Oh, I'm done. I'm finished. In the name of Jesus. I need you to get this because what I'm sharing with you today is so difficult. You can play. Thank you. It's difficult, but it's attainable, achievable, this legacy of love. Our children need to see it. You know, when my children, um, they have such a hard time with this whole marriage thing. I can't kiss my wife, hug her. No, it's weird. I'm like, y'all old enough. The things I do to your mother. I'm sorry. I was just trying to teach him. <laughs> My bad. I'm just saying. Y'all grown, right? All right. Act like we faking it. No, I, I, I had to, I'm trying to teach them. Like, this is good love. The stuff you see on TV, that's fake stuff. You see in the rap videos and stuff like that, that ain't real stuff. You should celebrate this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in trouble. I'm just trying to say, yeah, we grown folk here. The kids are the kids over there. I'm trying to teach you to understand something really great here. We must understand the principle and teach it to our children. I said, I, no, no, I said, no, I could kiss your mom. I need you to understand love. I, no, 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 I need to hug your mom. You need to see this because this is love. If we don't show it, they 
just don't get it. Even y'all, y'all need to know we love, we got love. Y'all need to know so y'all could do it at home. Amen. Oh, I got an amen there. I'm all right. I fixed myself. Listen, I want you to catch this. If you're here today and you're wrestling, I'm going to call a different call today if I could. If you're wrestling with some hate issues, either someone's hating on you and you can't get it together or you got some issues with someone else, can I call you to the altar to pray? Is that all right? Come on, stand to your feet. Today is about getting some stuff right, getting some stuff off of us. If you have some people in your life that you've been wrestling with and you can't, the principles I talked about are difficult at best, but you know right now you're struggling. Would you just come? Yeah, come on. Let's be real. Let's fill the altar. Just come across. Let's line up, line up across the altar. Give me two rows. Just, this is just an altar call for God to help you get over the fight you have. And this could be in your family. Let me say this. It could be in your family. I, it could be in your friendships. It could be in, you got the frenemies. Wherever it's at. Would you come and fill the altar? I want to help you today. Before you leave this altar today, I declare that whatever you had on you or whatever someone else had on about you, that you leave it at the altar. Like done. Like, you know what? I'm going to let this thing go. Because not because pastor says so, but because the word of God declared, I need to let it go. I'm, I'm holding it too much. The person gets on my nerves. I can't. Mm, I'm going to let that thing go. This call is simply just for that. Just might be somebody that's been uh, just picking at you, pressing at you a little bit. Come to the altar real quick. I want to pray. We're going to pray. We're just going to lay hands very quickly, and uh, we're going to touch and agree. Would you just begin to, whoever that person is, uh, it, maybe it's you. You could be that person, <laughs> and you know you are. You know, people know when they're, they're a mess. I, I, I know when I'm, my, my, my children have already told me, I know when I'm a mess. And they, they've, so I know when I come in the house and I start going crazy and they all, everybody start trying to run. I don't know if they do that in your house. Ron, you know what I'm talking about? Everybody try to run to their rooms and places. I, I know I'm the cause. And I'll say, look, I'm, I love y'all. I'm sorry. But y'all got to get this stuff right. I want to pray for you today. Come on, would you get, get in the proxy? Just God, do it for me right now. Just begin to pray. Trey, would you help me? Come on. Let's just lay hands quickly, 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 quickly. We just want to touch and agree. Father, I thank you even now. I thank you for these individuals, oh God, that would admit that there's some issues in areas. God, touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, that before they leave this altar, Lord, that they would walk in the power of the Holy Spirit even now. I thank you even now for what you're going to do in their hearts, in their minds on today, whether it be them or someone else, oh God. We thank you in advance, oh God, and we give your name glory and honor and praise, oh God, in advance for what you're going to do, oh God. Strengthen even now their resolve, Holy Spirit. Give them the power and the presence oh god that you called them to operate in to move in touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet even now we thank you in advance that they're leaving it at the altar even now forgiveness they shall master even now in this season we declare it we decree it we thank you in advance oh god even if it's in their family wherever it's at oh god i thank you that you are giving them the power and the presence and the ability to stand strong oh god we come against the enemy's thoughts even now that they not be their thoughts, oh God, but your thoughts be their thoughts even now. We thank you, oh God. Strengthen, oh God. Bind the hand of the enemy that would seek to kill, steal, and destroy families and tear apart, oh God, loved ones from each other. But God, you've given us the ability, oh God, to set the temperature in these areas and these matters. And so we thank you even now for all that you're going to do. God, we rebuke, oh God, the hand of the enemy. And we thank you in advance for your power and your 
presence, oh God. We thank you in advance for your strength, oh God. Even now, Lord God, we know that you're more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think or imagine. We thank you, Lord God, for how you're moving, oh God, in their lives. We thank you even now. Touch, oh God, strengthen her, oh God, even for her family's sake, oh God, that she be strong enough, oh God, to stand strong and know that you are God. We thank you for how you're going to move in her life. We thank you for the movement and the power and the presence, oh God, that you're operating in even now. We thank you for your movement, oh God, even now in their lives. We thank you, oh God, for how you're tearing down strongholds, oh God, and you're bridging gaps, oh God, that never could be before, oh God, but with your spirit, oh God, that it shall be done. We thank you even now. We give your name the glory and honor, Lord God. We thank you, oh God, for having your way, oh God. Cancel doubt and cause revelation to happen like never before in relationships, Lord. We thank you even now for the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God, R righteousness, oh God, run rampant, oh God, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Bind the hand of the enemy, Lord God, even now. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. We thank you even now for all that you're going to do, even those who are at their seat on today. We pray now, Lord God, that you would have your way. Many of us struggle in some areas that we might not admit, but we know we struggle. We pray now, Lord, that you would have your way in us. Create in us a clean heart renew in us a right spirit on today we love you today and we thank you for all that you're going to do and how you're going to move in jesus name and even now if you're here today and you're at this altar or you're at your seat and you say you know what i need to take this thing one step further i'm not saved i know i'm not saved if i go out there tomorrow i know and something happened i will not make it into heaven because my lifestyle doesn't match if you're at this altar or you're at your seat could you do me a favor if you would just say you know what that's me i need that i need additional prayer in that area i want to make some changes and tra change and, and even now if that's you thank you so much for everyone at the altar would you give them a hand at the altar <laughs> Amen. And if you're here today and you're like, you know what, I, I, I love the Lord, but I need a church home. You know, we can't grow without being planted somewhere. You need to be planted. If you're here today and you say, you know, I need a church home and this is a good place and I want to I wanna be a part of this fellowship here. If that's you today, would you lift your hand up today? No one's going to embarrass you. You don't have to say anything. We just want to pray with you, connect you, and be able to say, you know what, this is the place where you call home. And we want to uncover you and uh, connect with you at a level that would uh, transform your life. If that's you today, amen. Hallelujah. Could you all give the Lord a hand very quickly? Hey, thank you so much if you're joining us online and you're watching this rebroadcast. God bless you if you made the commitment for your life to be tra changed and transformed. It's just a confession of your mouth and a belief in your heart, and God will change you and transform you. Get into a Bible-believing church. If you're not in this area, find a church that will help you get closer to Christ. We thank you so much for joining us. Triumph in Life is a place for people just like you, where we love God, love people, and serve the world.